Hello, I'm Alistair Black of Fristan Pumps. In the next few minutes, I'm going to take you through the assembly and maintenance of this FKL positive displacement pump. This is a new generation of circumferential piston pump, setting a new standard of rotary piston technology. This is quite a small unit, but we can supply units in excess of 100 cubic meters an hour with reaching differential pressures up to 35 bar. To show you the features and how easy this pump is to assemble and maintain, we'll take it apart. Everything about this pump is designed to make the engineer's life more simple. Just by adding these jacking screws on the front cover, rather than putting a screwdriver in to jack off the front cover, these simple studs easily remove the front cover. As you can see, we have these hubs on the front cover and correspondingly on the housing. These hubs locate or lock into these hubs on the rotors, which they're non-contacting, they have liquid in between, and they act like a wetted bearing. Because you can't compress a liquid, uh, you can't compress the rotors to the housing. So it's very well supported, like a wetted bearing. You'll also notice these rotor nuts, or rotor bolts, are offset. They're designed and offset to aid uh, the pump. If product sets within the, uh, the, the hub area, these rotor nuts, rather than uh, acting like a, rather than the product acting like a spanner and undoing the rotor nuts, the rotor nuts will move elliptically round the center and break up the product. It also means we get more velocity within this chamber itself, so you get a higher cleaning velocity during CIP. Also, it means you don't have to torque up these nuts as tight because they're not running in the center of the rotor, so they can't physically unwind. By locking Rotor in place, you can easily move the rotor nuts. You can easily see the rotor nut and its offset bolt. Room and the rotors, very simple. They have a dog spline on the, on the shaft and a dog spline on the rotor. So you can't physically get the position of the rotor wrong. They're also dotted on, for example, on the Top rotor we have one dot which matches the, ro the shaft itself so you can't actually put it in the wrong position. Some people might mark top and bottom on the rotor but you don't need to do that. You always get the rotor in the right place. Bottom rotor. Now this pump is a 35 bar pump. However, we only need two bolts to loosen to actually remove the rotor case. And the rotor case can be easily removed and I'm not worried about the rotor case actually falling and hitting the shaft or damaging the, the seal. Why? 
we have these two support rods, which very simple design, um, but it just supports the rotor case so that you can remove it easily. The rotary seal face has a chamfer on either side here and the same chamfer, matching chamfer, on the shaft. The mechanical seal itself, the rotary seal, we have two, we can have a single seal or a double seal on the same rotary. This is to reduce the length of the shaft because on a, on a conventional pump, you'll have an inboard mechanical seal, outboard mechanical seal, which will be quite long, but we want to keep the shaft as short as possible so it reduces the deflection, the movement, because all positive displacement pumps, as pressure pushes against the rotors, you have potential contact on this rotor to the housing. Now, we've made the shafts 25% bigger in diameter to reduce deflection and made them shorter to reduce deflection, all allowing us to get a better, a much tighter clearance on the rotor to the housing. A tighter clearance on the rotor to the housing means better efficiency, means uh, improved suction capability and all round performance. The conventional rotor shape is like this, like a cantilever rotor and it's supported on this single hub here, whereas our rotor is supported symmetrically in the center of the rotor. So as the pressure acts against this rotor, it acts radially against the rotor and doesn't distort it as much as the conventional rotor, which means these hubs here will move outwards and potentially, or will, under pressure, contact the rotor case. So there'll be every, for every revolution under pressure, you could get contact between the rotor and the rotor case, which is going to reduce the efficiency and obviously put particles in the product. The mechanical seal, in, in this design, we've actually gone for one single and one double, just to show you the difference. Uh, for a double seal, the liquid would come in through the center of the seal through the middle of these two housings and then through the center of a similar design and then out through here. But because this is a single mechanical seal, it's just to show the difference. Um, to, to change it, and, and it's designed that way to, to show you that if you wanted to change from a single to a double, it's very simple. We remove this circlet, take out this uh, nylon and then replace it with a rear uh, station, st um, stationary seal and I'll quickly remove the, uh, the mechanical seal to give you an idea what it looks like and how easy it is. Just four bolts. manage to remove this housing. As you can see we have the inner face and the outer face and it's all supported within this housing. To remove the seal remove that circlip very simple. And then we can see the mechanical seal itself. We just push from the back, and pop out the two seal faces. Inside the housing, you can see two independent springs, will, which will act on the rotary seal independently, causing a better seal. You have an O-ring on the outs outboard, and an O-ring on the inboard to seal the mechanical seal. But it's very simple. This has no locking screws or, or locking, locking screws or grub screws, so your only weakness is the material itself, making it very strong. We have two pins here, so it's very easy to locate 
the inboard seal into position and the outboard seal just clips into place. Push down, that's the seal position. Quickly put in the circlip, no special tools required. That is your mechanical seal replaced. Four bolts, and it's back into position. Simple as that. So now um, we can actually look at the, the gearbox itself. If we remove Something, another feature that you might have noticed on, on this pump is we're not actually using lip seal designs on the gearbox, we're actually using labyrinth seals and that's a convoluted path the labyrinth seal has and it also has two faces like a mechanical seal to seal um, and stop oil getting out. Uh, it, it means just much more longevity of that mechanic, uh, the, that seal itself. So oil doesn't get out, but at the same ter term, product can't get in. And we, we even have a labyrinth seal on the back to stop high pressure hoses, oil coming in or water coming into the oil from high pressure, pressure hoses. So again, it's just much more robust. Now commonly, with circumferential piston pumps. The shimming, and the shimming of the gearbox is done to get the clearance between the rotors and the rotor case, which in the conventional gearbox being a solid piece, you have to put your bearings on and then potentially thread it through the gears themselves uh, and heating up the gears so that you can thread it through while holding a hot gear in your hand and it's, it's quite a difficult process. And then once you've assembled the gearbox, you check the clearance, and if the clearance is wrong, you have to take it all apart again and, and, and rebuild the gearbox. So our clever guys actually came up with um, a split case gearbox to make life a lot easier. And it's a split case gearbox, but still 35 bar. And we have a unique and very simple design, again, trying to make life easier. To, to jack the gearbox apart, we have two jacking screws, one here and one here. And very simply, we can remove the rear casing. Simple. Now we're all ready into the gearbox. You can see the you can see the labyrinth seal in the rear part. This is actually a stainless steel gearbox. A lot of pumps are supplied with cast iron painted, but you can also buy this uh, as a stainless steel unit. Better for um, lots lots of people using cleaning foams now, which is like paint stripper. Um, and, and removes the paint from gearboxes quite easily. So uh, we also have this option of a stainless steel gearbox. And we, we use a, an O-ring in the gearbox rather than a, a paper gasket. It just makes it more secure, much more longer lasting. So to remove the shaft is very simple. I must show you the timing of the gearbox is all done with the gears. Sorry, the timing on the rotors is done with the gears. So we have this 12 o'clock position on the shaft keys. As long as they're facing upwards, we can get the timing right on the rotors themselves. So it's very simple and easy to maintain. We also use straight cut gears 
rather than helical gears. Helical gears are good, they keep the noise down, however these pumps aren't running that fast that they're going to be noisy and we find with straight cut gears when uh, the bearings wear or as the bearings wear, helical gears would tend to push the shaft forwards that you may get contact between the rotors and the cover. With the straight cut gears we don't get that problem. Also with this gearbox we're using oil filled gearbox throughout. Uh, a lot of the conventional types of gearbox have um, grease bearings and oil filled um, gearboxes. Unfortunately the grease filled um, bearings have to be pumped in or pumped up every four to five hundred hours whereas we are using a completely oil filled gearbox which means the pump will run for four thousand possibly five thousand hours before you need to make an oil change just makes maintenance that much easier and also using an oil filled bath as the bearings eventually wear any particles that come off the bearings are, are fall, fall to the, uh, the base and, and don't regrind within the bearing if you're using grease filled bearing then obviously whatever wears is going to stay within that bearing and it's just going to wear the bearing that much quicker so another another unique feature so to remove the shafts again we have a very simple method we could easily remove the shaft. So now we've removed the bolts. It's very simple to remove the complete shaft as a cartridge, making your life very simple indeed. And as you'll notice, because we've got a split case gearbox, we have bearings here, and bearings here, rather than in the conventional design, we'd have a bearing here and maybe here on a longer shaft, and you would not get that same support as you do for the gears. Having the bearings here and here, we get a lot more support or a lot better support uh, for that gear itself. And that's as how, how or that is as simple as it gets to remove a shaft. As you can see, I've just removed that. We do have the shimming in the gearbox. Because it's a robust pump at 35 bar, the gearbox needs to be shimmed just to make it that much more robust. But as you can see, it's a very simple method to remove the shaft if we needed to replace the shims, change them, and then put the shaft back. And it's as simple to put the shaft. You, you could actually buy this shaft as a complete cartridge and keep it on the shelf if you wanted to. Uh, however, I don't think we've replaced many of the gearboxes. Because the pump is so robust, um, we've, we have not had to replace many gearboxes at all or shafts. Okay, occasionally somebody might not put oil in um, and it's going to run the gearbox dry, but I think that's the only problems that we may have had. We did, we did have an application recently um, where a customer was pumping uh, butter at 35 bar. Uh, somebody closed a valve on the discharge and the rotors did actually contact the housing. The pressure they reached was 65 bar. They sent it back to us wondering what, uh, what had happened and obviously we could tell it had been overpressurized and they confirmed it was 65 bar. We cleaned up the rotors, cleaned up the housing, put them back in again put the pump on test and away it went again and it's still running today and that's robust. So to put the shaft back in, obviously we must line up those gears as I mentioned earlier, but it's as simple as that.
put the gearbox back on. Split case is as simple as it came off. Again, everything on this pump is designed to make the engineer's life easier, simpler. Some people might say, well, I don't need 35 bar on this pump. I, I, you know, my pressure is, is, only, is only 20 bar or maybe 15 bar. And yes, that's, that's true, but uh, if the price is competitive on these pumps, which they are very competitive, you're actually getting more value for money. And we, we did actually have an application whereby the customer had a very simple duty, but was on an evaporator but the existing pumps that they were using were failing every three to six months. They changed to this design of pump, I think six years on, apart from a couple of mechanical seals that have replaced, they haven't had any issues with these pumps at all. Again, that's the gearbox done. Replace the rotary seal, locks into place. As I mentioned before, no grub screws, no locking rings, that's it. Replace the housing, as I mentioned again, we have the, the studs to support the housing. So I can put it on and still talk to the camera without worry. As I mentioned before, two studs, 35 bar. Simple. So, to put the, the rotors back, as I mentioned before, we have the two dots on the bottom shaft and the one dot, which will be matched by the shafts themselves. So it's very simple, dog spline, one, two. Rotor nuts. Torque the rotors. Settings can be found in the manual. Simple as that. Front cover. Simple, why would you need anything else other than the Fristan pump? Fristan pumps, engineered for lasting performance. Thank you.